by 2100, we expect sea level to be up a minimum of one meter. That means uh, Sacramento is going to become beachfront property. Getting a picture? The graduate students in Professor Bob B's civil engineering class at UC Berkeley are doing more than just the required coursework. They're participating in a major research project B is leading. The four-year study, funded by a $2 million National Science Foundation grant, will examine the all-important system of waterways known as the California Delta. The goal is to help avert the worst consequences of a major short- or long-term disaster. The project is called RESIN, Resilient and Sustainable Infrastructures, a subject Bob B. has studied for decades. It says we had a breach, and that's where part of the flood water in New Orleans came from. B and his colleagues surveyed the damage from Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans five years ago. Katrina serves as a grave warning about the potential for disaster in California. Uh, we've learned you can't ignore it, because if you do, uh, it will get its revenge. The California Delta lies roughly between San Francisco and Sacramento. The entire area was an inland sea until dirt levees were built on the edges of the rivers to create farms on the land in between. The Delta has since become a major resource for California. Its water is pumped out to 25 million Californians and to farms that produce half the nation's produce. And 80% of the state's fishery species live or migrate through the Delta. But the levees, also used as roads throughout the delta, are deteriorating and have caused the farms to sink below sea level. Fresh water has decreased due to drought and other pressures, and fish populations have diminished greatly. To sustain the delta's resources, B says that what's needed is not new technology, but new ways of thinking. He found that the disastrous aftermath of Katrina was the result of a lack of communication and planning on the part of the many groups that maintain the area's infrastructure. We embrace the philosophy of requisite variety. The variety in the research and the student team had to match the variety of the problem we were addressing. That became the watchword of our project. The study is a huge collaboration, including experts from public and private institutions and professors and students from many campuses. The researchers began to look for an area that would serve as a microcosm for the larger problem. They found Sherman Island in the heart of the Delta. Researchers call Sherman Island a choke point because of the many interests that converge here. Water, energy, telecommunications, environmental protection. Each is maintained by a separate organization, so each has the potential to choke the entire system. Sherman Island jumped out at us immediately. Anybody looking at the map would identify this area as, a, as problematic. This is the levee system in its various colors showing you the various problems, seepage and earthquake vulnerability. Gas lines going through here, power lines crossing here. Water is seeping into the low areas of the island where it has to be continuously pumped out. And when this island floods, these areas are going to flood first. Water levels are going to rise to the point where the levee simply is a bathtub. There are many organizations that are responsible for power, water, transportation, etc. Katrina showed us these people don't necessarily communicate or plan with each other. In a minute, I'll describe what we're going to do. In this first phase of the study, researchers are gathering information about the situation on the ground and the difficulties of successfully coordinating such a vast array of public services. If, in fact, we lost power here, that power would affect our ability to pump natural gas. It's going to affect our ability to power our water systems, our pumping stations. Likely, we lose telecommunications. They run the alarm and control systems, so everybody is in this together. This remnant levee, this used to be a levee that kept... The research teams looked at levees, water levels, power, gas and communication lines, and even a carbon sequestration test site where trees have been planted to help offset the levels of carbon dioxide in the air here. We can't build things so that they'll stand everything. But we have to build things nowadays so that they can bounce back from a shock. And we look to nature. One of the things we have to think about is, are there ways in which you can 
mutually benefit having roads, having gas, having farmland in a way that can be co-managed better. Bob B. says California can avoid disaster if enough cooperation can be built into the system, as well as an understanding among policymakers, businesses, and residents that protection will come with more efficient water usage and conservation. There's one message. Manage or be managed. This is Roxanne Makashjan at UC Berkeley.